In your health headlines this morning, from Senator John Fetterman to Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell, Americans have witnessed many politicians publicly battle health issues while still working in Washington. Yeah, Virginia Congresswoman Jennifer Wexton is now inspiring others as she battles a rare form of Parkinson's disease. ABC's Danny New reports. In honor of my former constituent, the late Secretary of State Madeleine Albright. While addressing her bill to rename a post office after one inspiring politician, Congresswoman Jennifer Wexon introduced many Americans to another. I use an assistive app so that you and our colleagues can understand me. Over the past year, the Virginia Democrat has been diagnosed with supranuclear palsy, which she describes as Parkinson's on steroids. It's a deadly brain disease that gradually limits your ability to speak and walk. If there's one thing that Democrats and Republicans can agree on, it's that Parkinson's disease sucks. In April of last year, Congresswoman Wexton announced that she had been diagnosed with Parkinson's disease, but then in September issued a statement on social media that her diagnosis had been modified to this deadlier disorder. She even went on to announce that she would not be able to run for re-election and that she was, quote, heartbroken to have to give up something I've loved after so many years of serving my community. I am proud to be here today speaking in support of my bill. But as Congresswoman Wexton showed the world during her time on the House floor Monday, more and more technological advances over the past year are inviting people to reimagine possibilities. In the fall, the Gallaudet University football team and AT&T unveiled this new helmet, which would allow the Bison's coach to communicate with his players who are deaf and hard of hearing before a play. Do you think we'd have more like deaf people in the NFL if this helmet had existed longer? Oh, yeah, yeah. There is also the unveiling of the Monarch, which is a tablet that can display 10 lines of Braille at once or even graphics that you can physically touch. I urge my colleagues to vote for this measure. And as we saw on Monday, even someone who is losing her ability to verbally speak can still have a voice in one of the nation's most historic chambers. In New York, for ABC News, I'm Danny New.